and welcome back to the new foundation video of the week. And as I sat down to film this, I realized that my top kind of looks like I'm wearing a bathing suit, but it is a regular shirt. I promise you, not sitting here in a weird outfit. <laughs> All right, so for this week's new foundation, I have the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. Holy moly, that is a mouthful. <laughs> this foundation retails for $10.99. It comes in this little cool pump tube applicator looking thing. So interesting little take on it. Let's see, there's 0.75 of a fluid ounce in there, so we're missing 0.25. Usually we get that full ounce. It also comes in 31 shades. It is a medium buildable coverage with a natural finish. It's supposed to keep the skin feeling moisturized all day. It has a creamy texture that goes on like a moisturizer, then blends invisibly to even out the skin tone weightlessly. Ooh, it's supposed to keep in anti-pollution, antioxidant, and anti-blue light ingredients. Interesting. I wonder what specific ingredients those are that's supposed to keep those out or what's supposed to be in there to help fight against those, if that makes sense. Because what it's supposed to keep out is oils, parabens, phthalates, synthetic dyes, and fragrances. So it sounds like a well-rounded foundation that isn't bad for you. They're trying to keep it only with good ingredients, keep out all the bad stuff. So a nice skincare foundation that's gonna not be harmful for your skin. So I I like the idea of this. Of course, it's all about application, how it wears and all of that, which we're gonna be testing out today. And that's actually all of the claims. There's no specific wear time to this foundation that they're plastering on the front saying it's gonna wear for 24 hours. I never really believe those claims anyway. I like it when they just say like, hey, it's a foundation, you know, it's gonna wear differently on everyone. It's kind of how it normally goes. So let me just roll into some swatches. I'm gonna swatch this baby out and compare it to a few other foundations that I have. That way you guys can kind of get a gist of the shade of it. So let's jump into it. Starting with the foundation we're testing out today, the Revlon Candid. This is the shade 110 Porcelain. Moving right next to it is the Physician's Formula Foundation LC1. Then we have the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation in Soft Ivory. Right next to that is the Maybelline Super Stay in 110 Porcelain. So you can kind of see the difference between Maybelline to Revlon in the 110. This one is definitely a lot pinker in undertone, a little bit darker, and this one's a lot lighter more of a yellow tone. And lastly, we have the CoverGirl Healthy Elixir Foundation in Classic Ivory, so you guys can see a good little range here. As per usual, I'm just putting a swatch of the foundation we have today on the back of my hand, kind of spreading it out and leaving it so we see if it oxidizes or anything like that. So that's the swatch. Now, let's just go ahead and get into some application. I'm gonna make a separate little <laughs> area here and just pump out one pump. See how long we can make that work. I'm gonna go in on one half of the face with the sponge, the other half with the brush. You guys know the routine by now and primers are already on. I'll list that down below in the description box. And let's just start applying this on. Hold on, let me zoom you a little bit closer. Felt like you guys were kind of far away, so it looks like it's going on pretty even. It definitely seems like it's a light coverage, verging on a medium to me, at least with the sponge that is. And I have just about used up the full one pump and only gone in this one area. It's gonna be interesting to see how it compares to a brush, because I already need to go in with another pump here. I'm just working this in all over this half of the face, being as messy as I want because I don't have any other products on. Okay, with all of it on the face, it does look like there is some good coverage to it. More of a medium. That initial layer looked a lot more light, but once you kind of blend it all together, it does seem like it is pretty medium. Keeping that in mind, you know, it's not going to cover everything. It does say it is buildable, so I feel like you could get it to that layer, but I don't want to make it accidentally go cakey, so I'm just going to leave it like this on this side. I did go through about two pumps on just this half of the face. I have a teeny tiny little bit left that 
probably wouldn't cover that much. So let's take one pump on the back of my hand here and then go in with a brush. I'm gonna take the Morphe Y7. I just took like a little teeny stamp. Let's start working it in on this side. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, you definitely get a whole lot more spurtability. <laughs> I can't think of the word right now. Oh my gosh. The, the product goes a longer way on the brush than the sponge. Still working with just that one initial pump. I even put it in a separate area than that one where this product was a little bit left over just to see how much a full pump could really get me. And the one pump that I put back here has done this entire half of the face so far. I like that. And as far as the shade, I think it was pretty good. I could maybe go for one shade darker. I feel like it gives me a little bit of a ghostly look, but you know, I am pretty gosh darn ghostly. So here we have the sponge side. Here is the brush side. I have to say, I think I prefer the brush side rather than the sponge. I feel like you got a lot better coverage. You only had to go through with one pump on one half instead of two pumps. If you wanted to, you, I mean, you could always stipple out a little bit here with the sponge, but even with going in with the brush side, I didn't see any stippling marks throughout the foundation, which I really enjoy. I hate those ones that that look a little bit smeary where you just see those lines in between. I don't see that. So, all right, not bad. And as far as the natural finish, I see a little bit of a radiance with the foundation, but at least up close, it looks a little bit more matte to me and it has dried down. There's no tackiness to the foundation. So just something to kind of keep in mind. Ooh, foundation lips, why are they always there? By the looks of it, the swatch on the back of my hand has also dried in, so let's do a little comparison here. Oh yeah, it looks like when the foundation actually dries down, it gets a little bit darker, which actually matches my skin tone a little bit more, at least on my hand. So I kind of enjoy that since I was thinking this foundation looked a little bit fair on me. Always good to test that oxidation. So now I am gonna tell you guys the time. It is 8.31 a.m. We're gonna use that as the starting point for today's wear test. And I'm gonna go ahead, pop off camera really quickly, finish up the rest of the makeup, check back in with you guys whenever that is on because usually that takes me another hour. And we will do a flashback test and the full works. So I'll be back in just two seconds. Full face has been applied, so let me just fill you in on a little bit of the details. Wow, that was quite a coincidence. Text and email at the same time. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go over just really briefly what I used. So for foundation reviews, I don't like to put concealer everywhere throughout the foundation. I've seen some of those reviews and basically you're just reviewing the concealer in my opinion. I want to see how the foundation wears on its own, so whenever I do these kinds of videos, all I do is take a little bit of concealer just right underneath the eyes and that is it. So for today, I use the Milani Conceal and Perfect in 110 Nude Ivory, so that way it's a little bit of a darker shade and it just matches in with the foundation, not doing any highlighting, brightening, nothing of that. I didn't even put highlighter on today because I don't like to have any of that on my face, so that way it doesn't exaggerate the oils. We see everything clear as day. For powder, I ended up using the Kylie Trans translucent one, bronzer, Too Faced, Chocolate Soleil, blush, L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted and Bashful, and then for the eyes, I ended up just going in with the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette that I just reviewed. So that is all of the details, nothing too crazy today. I like to keep it pretty gosh darn simple so that way we can see how everything is looking. So right off the bat, let me just show you guys the time now. So it is now 9.22 AM. It's been almost an hour for me to put the rest of the face on. Kind of expected it. And within that time, the foundation has dried down completely. I felt it as I was going along with the rest of my makeup. It just felt like it was locking into place more and more and more. And it started to feel really drying. Like, I mean hardcore, like if you have dry skin, you would have to douse your face with a lot of setting spray. I even needed to grab some setting spray and just like revive it because it just felt like Ooh, <laughs> I was crying. 
And with that, I started noticing a couple areas here. Let me get you closer. So right away, the smile lines are really defined and it's not like the foundation has texture or cakiness. It's really hard to describe, but just in these areas like the chin, the nose, and on the forehead, it just looks like it's really dry. Like you can see it on my face, which is really weird. And almost immediately, it looks like the foundation is already fading off my nose, which I haven't even done anything. I just put the foundation there and a little bit of powder, and that is it. And it already looks like you can see a little bit of my skin naturally poking through. So not exactly a great start. I mean, the thing with me is that I do have very oily skin, so throughout the day, if I have a little bit of a drier formula, it'll kind of warm up to my face and kind of get a little bit more comfortable because those oils start going through. The foundation just, you know, wears in a little bit. You break it in, in a sense. But I feel like if you have a drier skin tone, this may already be a no-go because on your face, it's gonna feel very drying and then it'll probably stay that way throughout the day. So it'll definitely be very interesting to see how it will look by the end of the day since it is pretty drying. I don't know, maybe it's gonna keep those oils away throughout the day. Fingers crossed. I did also do a little flashback test. Let me pull up the picture and it looks like flashback is approved. I did go to a pretty dark spot in my house. That way we could get a really good idea of how it's looking. So I'm thinking the only thing left now to do is to wear this foundation. So I'm gonna give it another three hours. Check back in with you guys. I'm gonna meet you in a different part of the house that way you can see this foundation in a different kind of lighting. I'm being really extra with my hands here. <laughs> I'll be back in a little bit. Time for the halfway check-in. It is now 12.17 p.m. I am just like 13 minutes shy of that four hour timer and I just thought I would check in with you guys so you could see this foundation, how it's looking, how it's progressing. And just like I suspected, the foundation has warmed up to my skin so it feels a whole lot more comfortable now than it did initially when I put it on when it felt just like really dry on the face. Now it's more of a comfortable feeling. I honestly don't even really feel that it's on my face now and it's, it's just formed with the skin so I like it now <laughs> a lot more than I initially did which is really good. And my skin looks a little bit radiant you know is it the oils or is it just the finish of the foundation I don't know it's kind of hard to tell at this point like I don't look oily it looks like I just have a nice little glow to the face and I'm not mad at it I don't want that to keep progressing I would like it just to stay exactly as it is let me zoom you out a little bit like right here that's that's where I want to keep it <laughs> I don't want to have to powder it down because today is a no touch-ups day so I'm not going to be putting any powder on top of this just letting it wear how it is so that is the foundation at this point halfway through everything is just looking really good and I am so happy I was so concerned that this foundation was just going like me, but it has survived. It has started to save itself a little bit, so I'm pretty happy with it so far. We are gonna give it another four hours though, and then see how it looks at the end of the day after the full eight hour wear test. So I'll be back in just a little bit. It is time for that final check-in. It is now 4.48 p.m. So we are 15, maybe almost just about 20 minutes over the eight hour mark. And I have to say this foundation ended up taking a really pleasant turn. In the beginning, it started out a little bit rough and I wasn't sure how things were gonna end up looking towards the end, but the final result is actually pretty gosh darn good. Good. Let me get you even closer. There are a few areas that didn't wear that great. The tip of the nose, you can see a lot of my natural skin poking through, so it has kind of faded off the tip there. I did start to see that kind of right away, and it does look like maybe a little bit has worn off these sides of the cheeks, just right about here, where you just can see quite a bit of natural skin. And then the smile lines are pretty defined here, but I mean, if you're a really happy, smiley, talkative person, that tends to kind of happen. I tend to notice it quite a bit, and I usually just kind of buff it out when I see it. And as far as the oils, they have been controlled the entire day. That shine that I showed you guys in the halfway check-in, I mean, that's as bad as it got. I mean, right now it still looks really good. There's a teeny tiny bit of shine, but honestly, it doesn't look greasy or over 
overly oily. It just looks like a little bit of a luminosity to the skin. Maybe you could pass it off as dewy <laughs> if you wanted to. I am gonna take a little bit of powder though. This is of course the ColourPop No Filter Pressed Powder in light. And I just wanna take a little bit, see if we can take away a little bit of that shine, which honestly, I mean, don't even need to use that much powder. So that is really good. The only thing that I am noticing is that it does look a little bit dry up here on my upper lip. I'm wondering if you guys could even see that. So overall, I have to say there's definitely some pros and cons to this foundation. It's definitely more of an oily skin type of foundation. I would definitely recommend it for you guys rather than my dry skin people because I feel like it's gonna be a little bit too drying on you where you can just really see the foundation just kind of sucking the life out of you because my upper lip, it doesn't get oily. It's kind of weird to say, and I see the like dryness of the foundation in that area, so I feel like it might be a dangerous one for you guys to test out. <laughs> but for my oilier skin people, it did really help to control the oil throughout the day. I mean, you guys have seen some of the foundations I've tested out before, and whoo, this one held up really beautifully. There's just those areas that did a little bit of fading. But aside from that, I would have to say that this is a pretty good foundation if you have an oilier skin type and you wanna test out something new with a medium coverage. Just keep all of those facts in mind. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this review on the new Revlon Candid Photo Ready Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. <laughs> if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!